huge two month road trip of Aotearoa New Zealand continues today and for this episode we're starting in the city of Hastings in the Hawke's Bay. The Hawke's Bay region is filled with amazing food, we can't wait to share it with you. Aotearoa New Zealand has a unique cuisine that revolves around the land and oceans and the fresh food it provides. In this massive New Zealand series we're journeying from the top to the bottom of Aotearoa, taking you into the heart of our country's incredible food culture. We'll share how New Zealanders gather and cook from the land, uncover heritage family run businesses that create some of Aotearoa's best food and go behind the scenes of New Zealand's favourite restaurants. This video centres around Hawke's Bay, a region on the east coast of Te Ika Ao Maui, the North Island. We take you into a local institution which has been producing delicious bacon since 1914. Eat traditional Māori dishes of boil up and hangi and chow down on American diner food in the cellar door of one of Hawke's Bay's most beloved wineries. You don't want to miss this series. Hit subscribe and get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. The Hawke's Bay is a very neat region to explore because it has two big population bases very close together. So we're in the city of Hastings right now and Napier is just down the road 15-20 minutes away so you can explore both very easily and there's also a lot of vineyards around this area so there's also a great wine culture you can explore. But today we're starting in Hastings and it's all about a local's favourite, an absolute institution that has been around a very long time and it's a bacon shop called Holly Bacon. It's just up the road here and I am pumped for this one because I love bacon and an institution of a bacon shop has got to be good. I love this place already. We walked in and you're just hit with the smell of bacon on the hot plate. It smells insane in here. So it's made up of two parts really this shop. So you've got the deli where you can buy the bacon and the sausages and whatnot and then they have a little cafe which we're in right now where they're serving up the bacon. And this is a really special business. We've just been talking to um, the family. It's a fifth generation family business. They've been around since 1914. That is a really long time, so over a hundred years. And I can just see the bacon over here on the grill. Look at how good it looks. So a bacon and egg roll coming right up for us. Thank you. I've got my bacon and egg roll. So the guys here have used middle bacon. It's uh, rindless, so you don't get that, that chew when you're biting into the roll. Comes with an easy over egg, and the bread uh, roll is from the bakery, which is just around the corner. Now, they also asked if we wanted any sauce on our roll, and we just asked them what was their favorite, and they have shown us this guy. It's Marariki. So it's a seven pepper sauce, and they said if you like a bit of heat, this is perfect with it. So we got them to slosh a ton of that on there. All right, time to get into this bad boy. How good did that bacon look on the grill? It was sizzling up beautifully, and the color of the meat is a really a rich, deep red color. Here goes. Mmm, not enough bacon in that mouthful. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. That bacon is a flavour explosion. It's beautifully dry, so it's not oily. It is just packed full of flavour. It's got such a, a strong salty in a good way flavor of bacon it's just like coated my mouth that's all I can taste that intense bacon flavor mm. Mm. look at that you can just tell by the color of the meat that it's gonna pack a punch great level of fat in there as well which has gotten a little bit crispy so it just sort of um, melts in your mouth 
And then that egg is perfectly done. Bread, excellent. This is so good. After eating that unreal bacon and egg sandwich, they've led us into the back of the shop to have a look at the process. And this is unreal. So we've got all the bacon in the brine tanks here. So it brines for weeks and weeks. It's a very long, traditional process. So they do it properly. And then it comes out of the brine tanks and gets dried over here to let all that brine drop off. Very cool to see. They've just opened the smokehouse door for us. So this dark black hole behind me is the smokehouse. So there's no bacon smoking in there at the moment, but the smell is unbelievable. The walls are coated in the, in the um, residue from smoking. And what they do is they cold smoke. So very unusual, hardly anyone does it. You've got this cold smoked bacon hangs in here on the hooks. And I can't tell you how good the smell is. And now it's time to hit the retail side. So we're definitely taking away some of this incredible bacon to have for breakfast in the, in the camper van or lunches or dinners. Wow, it looks good. Having that whole tour, seeing the whole process, very lucky and getting to eat their bacon here on site. I love that they have the retail right here for all the products and then the cafe right here to have the bacon right here on site. So you get the, the look of it, you get to buy it and you get the smell of it and the taste of it when you walk in. Unreal business, so much history, loved it here. When we announced we were going to do this New Zealand series, so many of you said that you wanted us to show you traditional Māori food. Now Māori are the indigenous people of New Zealand and it's actually um, quite hard to find like Māori cuisine in a restaurant or a takeaway, you have to search pretty hard. I can only think of, say, one spot in Auckland, our hometown, of where I'd go for Māori cuisine. But we're in Hastings and we have heard that this spot that we're about to visit is a local's favourite. So we're grabbing some honey and some ball up from this spot. See ya! Bye. Very cool little store for the hangi and the boil up. So we've purchased that and we're taking it away. So it's a very small shop, mainly for takeaway. They had a couple of tables, but it was all packed out. So part of the joy of van life. So this trip we're doing, this two month trip, top to bottom of New Zealand is in a camper van. So the joy of that is we can take away and go eat in our van. So we're gonna enjoy the hangi and the boil up in the camper van. We have got our hungi from the handy hungi shop and we got that boil up as well. So we're back in the van, all plated up, ready to go. Now hungi is a um, very traditional meal. So it is a very traditional food of the Māori here in New Zealand. And it is cooked underground traditionally. So they heat up stones on the fire, uh, bury the stones and the food under earth and cook it long and slow underground. Now, like Sheena said, it's very hard to find hangi in a commercial sense in New Zealand. There's not many places you can buy it. And often when it is commercially cooked, it's actually cooked in a gas cooker above ground for ease, I think. This place does it in a gas cooker, but what they do is they put some wood chips and some manuka chips to get that smoky sort of earthy flavor through the dish as well. And it is strong, that smell. It's very good. So we've got the plate of hangi, we've got Sheena's boil up, and we also got some fried bread. So it's basically some big, lumps of fried dough. That's another very traditional Māori food. And look at this hangi. So it's got all the trimming. So we've got some chicken, got a big piece of pork here. We've got stuffing in the middle. We've got pumpkin, potato, kumara, which is sweet potato, and watercress. So watercress, a really traditional green um, in Māori cuisine. That's the very common green that you'll often find with Māori cuisine. So let's dive right on in. I want some pork some stuffing and some watercress. Whoa, the smell of this is unreal. Mmm. 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 Mm. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's very smoky from the manuka chips they've put in there. And something you'll find with hangi. Mmm. Oh. 
because it's all cooked underground essentially together everything has a sort of a a flavor of everything else within it so you get the whole dish has a flavor it's all infused in there and this has totally got that that hungy taste that you expect when you have a when you have a hungy mmm 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 juicy chicken I love the stuffing it's full of herbs heaps of flavor and some fried bread mmm mmm mm. whoa that is good it's exactly what you expect a big piece of fried dough so fluffy in the middle a little bit crunchy on the outside it's got a bit of an oily taste because it's deep fried in oil that's good that's going to be a very good accompaniment to this this hungy oh this is good this is one heck of a feed on a cold wet day like we've got here today I get to eat the boil up and boil up is my kind of dish. It's made up of pork bones, you've got vegetables, so in this case potato, and it's boiled up in a big pot with water um, to which you can add dough boys, so essentially just flour, water, baking powder. They boil up and then you add some watercress on top and that steams up and that's the dish. So it's, it's very simple and I've got this huge pork bone here to hack into, so I'm just gonna actually get in with my hands because it's much easier and I'm just gonna go for a big bite like this. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. The pork is very simple. Great flavour. It's just seasoned with salt and so you can really taste that pork flavour. So I'm gonna just get a bit more of this pork and taste some of this watercress as well. Mm. It's still got a great crunch and chew to it. The dough boys has soaked up a ton of that stock and also the pork fat. Mm. Tasty, but I'm all about the pork. Simple and satisfying. Hawke's Bay is wine country. There are a load of great wineries to explore in this region. And we're at Craggy Range Winery. And it's named after Tamata Peak, which is the Craggy Range, which is just behind me, which we've just been hiking around. Now we are here to eat as well as drink, but this is not a normal winery restaurant. We are here to eat at their diner. So it's a diner at a vineyard. So we're off for some burger and fries. So we've just walked into the winery, it's beautiful, all the wines lined up, they make, they make both red and white wines here. So Craigie Range have a fine dining restaurant and then they've just opened this diner which is a part of the, the restaurant as well and it's just a couple of days a week. We're in the diner now and I love it that it's got a real diner feel. So you've got a sort of a diner style re um, menu with burgers and um, milkshakes. I've got a lime milkshake which you can add rum to but I'm driving the, the camper van so I'm on a straight lime milkshake. Sheena's on the wine, beautiful wine at this winery. And what we're actually sitting in is the tasting room. So this is where they do all the salad door and the tastings and sales but in the evening it gets turned into the diner and it has a beautiful feel to it. I mean the view out this window over here is of the range. It's a floor to ceiling window. The view is absolutely stunning. It's a very nice environment and we are eyeing up the burger menu on this really cool diner style menu. burgers and fries have arrived and holy moly they look really good so I ordered the Texas fried chicken burger so I've got some fried chicken in there I've got tomato and chili jam iceberg sriracha mayo some pickles down there a bunch of fries and even ooh, 
even a little bit of extra fried chicken. And Thomas went for a classic cheeseburger, so look at this. Cheese, pickles, ketchup, mustard, a really good looking patty and red onion and fried. Okay, let's get a taste of this bad boy. Turn it around. Ooh so nice and soft that brioche bun. I'm so glad I ordered this. The fried chicken is epic. It's got this really great uh, batter on the outside or crust. It's quite dry, not in a bad sense, but it just has that crunch as you bite into it. The bun is great, it's very soft. And then you've got the sweetness of that tomato and chili jam with a tiny tingle of heat. It's real good. And those pickles add a real great crunch. I'm gonna try some of these fries. Mmm. Mmm. They're great. Crunchy on the outside. Really soft and fluffy on the inside. This is one good burger. I love that we're having this diner style food in the vineyard. So it's highly unusual to come to a vineyard and have food like this. So I think it's a great concept. And this is a, a limited time concept. So we're very lucky to be here to experience this. And I love the little touches they've done. So, you know, food served in the baskets, you've got that American style, but then the little kiwi touches as well. This is a classic kiwi thing. This is the tomato sauce holder. So shaped like a tomato. That is super kitsch New Zealand. Love that. And this cheeseburger looks unreal. Look at the stack on that. Oh yes. Oh. Mm. oh man. I need a napkin. Wow. I adore a classic cheeseburger like this. Cheese, pickles, medium rare cooked patty, so nice and pink in the middle. Super tangy from the pickles. Nice and cheesy. Mm. Oh man, this is such a good burger. The bun is delicious too. Nice and soft, but it's got presence, so you can actually taste the bun. I like that. Mm. Oh, big thick chips with nice chunky salt on them. Oh man. Mm. That is good. And I just love the concept. I love sitting in this environment. Feels very posh, very fancy in here. And then chowing down on a burger, there's sort of like 1950s music playing, all these kitsch touches. This is a super cool concept and an awesome burger.